back to another video. If this is your first time coming across my channel, then welcome. And if it is not your first time, then you will know that I don't usually make videos like this. <laughs> usually you see my face, but today we're just going to be focusing on iArtbook. I have actually searched up videos on iArtbook, and honestly there aren't that many videos. There aren't even really any walkthroughs. Most of them are just people using it and there's only collectively I think five so I just decided to make this little walkthrough and actually as I was preparing to make this video I noticed that they have made some updates and if you got it a couple months ago you'll notice that every single control is on this side right here and there actually used to be the brushes all on this upper line up here so it kind of threw me off a little bit but I'm going to walk y'all through just everything that I have learned so far. And as the creators are constantly updating this app, I'm sure there will be new things. But as of now, I'll just be showing you the things I'm aware of. And, you know, if you're new to this app, hopefully you will find it helpful. So first off, obviously, you're going to need your brushes because if you're making art, you need brushes. So it's just right here, this little tiny brush icon it's right below the eraser icon which i actually find interesting because it seems as if you can choose different erasing brushes which honestly i don't think i've ever seen before i find this very interesting and then below it your brushes now this is definitely different because if like i said you downloaded the app a couple months ago when the brushes were at the top it only displayed three certain ones but now the whole side panel will show you various brushes now you can have a bunch of them at once you can preset them which i think is really neat i'm not really going to get into all the brushes but here are a few of them you're going to select the brush icon and the little back button and then it's just going to give you all these different categories ink calligraphy airbrush blur the list goes on and on although honestly some of my favorites would be the textures i like this crystal texture here and just for example i'm gonna put it here honestly it looks a lot like chalk if you have ever used procreate it looks a lot like the chalk texture of course you have your little back and forward arrow just down here and then if you're wondering where do I change the brush color? The ability to do that will actually disappear if you're not pressed on the brush icon, so you have to make sure you're on the brush icon. And then about four spaces below it, you're gonna see this little circle with the color, and it's black right now. But they have all kinds of different presets. They have palettes. They actually have preset palettes, a boatload of these. I mean, as you can see, I'm, I'm scrolling and they are not going away, so. There are loads of these palettes, which is something you do not have in Procreate. And you can actually create your own palette if you like. Now, iArtBook is pretty new to the art community, so I don't believe there are any digital brush packs available for purchase yet. At least for iArtBook, which is honestly something that I am wanting to start working on. So, at the time of me posting this, I may not have a brush set out, but if this video is a little old check the description and I may have updated with some links to brush packs for this specific app that I have made because it is possible but I do want to answer one question that I believe a lot of people have been asking and that is can you buy Procreate brush packs and import them to iArtBook and the answer to that is no you can do that it has to be specifically advertised for iArtBook but again, it's so new to the art community, I don't believe that that's possible. So for now, you kind of just have to be content with what they give you, um, brush-wise and palette-wise. But you can always add new ones. As you can see here, palette 2, you can press add to your color. And it'll actually just add the color that's selected for your brush. But you can go to the square, you could change it, you can do all kinds of stuff with this. And then there's the little circles, if you don't like the square, you have the circle here. So that's pretty much it for the brush, you have all your brushes here. And then I had somebody ask about the flow of certain pins. 
So if you've ever used Procreate, you know that there are certain settings that you can add to pens that will make them flow, or more specifically, your ink pens. So like this calligraphic pen here actually has a built-in flow, as you can see. It's really smooth, and I did take a look at it, so you press this pen, and you can see all of the different settings. And if you will go to Stabilizer, right here, this is what I believe is going to stabilize. I don't know if that's a word, but it, this is going to make your pen stable as if you reset your brush, as you can see. Now, as you can see, a correction actually went down a lot, so let's try this. So if you just have downloaded iArtBook, it's actually going to perform like this. So as you can see, it's not as smooth, so if you want to fix that, go to Stabilizer. Turn your correction up quite a bit, and that's automatically going to make it way, way better. It's just going to flow better. Let's make it just a bit bigger, but... As you can see, that pretty much brought it back to how I had it because I was just playing around with it. So you definitely want to go to Stabilizer for large spots, which honestly these look like leaves to me. But if you go to Stabilizer, correction is at zero. So if you want it to be more flowy, all you gotta do is turn that up. And then look at that. It's, it's super, super smooth. These are honestly the same results as you can get if you were on procreate it's just a little bit of a different name so under each brush you're gonna have to select each brush but you can go under stabilizer and turn your correction up and that's how you make your brushes flowier flowier i i guess that's the word for it <laughs> it just makes them flow more if you will press the little button with the three dots here this is going to be everything that they give you now because they have now updated the app, there are ads now, which I'm not super jazzed about, honestly, but they've got to make money somehow, and because the app is free, I do understand that they now want to put ads because more and more people are finding out about this. So now you can upgrade to Pro, and you can watch things for ads just like you would IBIS Paint, if you've tried that before, but I feel like iArtBook has a bit more of that Procreate quality to it, even though you do have to watch ads and buy premium. And I haven't bought premium, so I'm not sure if it's worth it. That may be another video to make on this. But anyway, back to the little three dotted button. You're gonna see full screen, save, smudge, bucket, shape, selection, transform, copy and paste, FX, effects, flip canvas, reference, settings, curves, and tips. So. Bucket is really your standard just filler. It's just going to fill everything. And smudge, this is probably the only way you'll be able to blur or create a gradient, at least for right now. So let's actually try that right now. I have not tried that yet, but I do want to see if I can create a gradient. Let's actually zoom in on this. I just want to see how well blur works. Let's make this a bit darker. All these different smudging tools, but I'm going to pick just the soft one here. And <laughs> if you keep going, it's going to smudge it a lot. But let's try making the size smaller and then the opacity a lot less. And honestly, you can make a pretty sweet gradient with it. I think if you were just to pull it to the side, it'd be a bit better. And obviously, if your canvas was just covered in this color, it, it would be a lot, lot better. But smudge, if you do it right, <laughs> will definitely help you create a gradient. It's just the longer you go, as you can see, it kind of just dissolves into the canvas, which I don't really know how that's possible, but... It is, so you've got smudge here. The other really important button that you're gonna want is obviously the save button because this is how you are going to save anything you draw to your camera roll. So you're gonna press save. You could do PNG with a transparent background, JPEG without transparent background, lots of different things and also Right here's how you are going to get your time lapse video. I've had people ask me about this and this is actually how you do it. So you can press export time lapse video. It's going to create your video. So you just press save video. 
and let's just see how this does it does as you can see it's literally everything I did but if you see here it does smoothly show my actions the only thing is if you've ever used IBIS paint you'll know what I mean when I say after you upload a video of your whole drawing it's actually going to be very fluid however here it's literally just in chunks so it makes a little less of a smooth drawing video however I do believe you could use something like iMovie or whatever you use to edit your drawing videos and you could speed it up and even though it's in chunks could make it smoother but yes this is how you can make your whole drawing into a video it'll just automatically start recording from the time you start drawing to the time you stop there is transform as well now transform is just going to be something that whatever layer you're on is going to select everything and you can make it smaller you can make it bigger you can squish it this is just like procreate if you just press on the upper left hand corner there's this little mouse arrow sort of looks like the arrow on door the explorer if you press that it'll automatically activate this now that's on procreate for this you actually have to go to the three dots you have to press transform and it's going to select everything on that one layer and you can you can change it i mean you can do anything with it you can spin it this is just going to help you move it any way you want to the last really important question that i know some people had was about the layers now, how do you get to the layers? That is very simple. It's just this little square here right above your little color circle. And you can add so many layers. I don't really know the limit, but I think that depends on the size of your canvas. Now, the big question was, can you move layers? And as you can see, hold and you can drag. So you can change the layers. You can also duplicate layers you can delete layers you can make it invisible just by pressing that little check there you can press the n and you can do alpha lock create mask prepare for transform merge bottom layers so if you want to merge all your layers it'll do that for you this is also how you can change the opacity of a certain layer not going to get a real-time view on that until you click out so you're not really going to know precisely how opaque you want to make this but that's probably just something that they'll eventually correct with an update the only other thing i want to mention is let's say you've created a drawing let's go ahead and just get rid of this layer let's say you have created a drawing and you just get out of the color so let's say you just really like this color and you've gone and fixed it and then oh no you didn't really save it or you didn't have a palette for that and you're just drawing with the other color now you can actually press this little button here it's at the very very bottom right next to the sliders for size and opacity so it almost looks like a little target like this little target shape here and when you press it then you can just drag it wherever you want and you can drop it and there's your desired color once more and then if you want to go and make your own color palette with it you just press on that little palette button press add and there you go now it's on your palettes and you can switch back and forth you can also use all of these that is it for this video i hope i answered some of y'all's questions like I said, there's hardly anything out on YouTube right now about this app, so if there's anything else that you would like to know. Honestly, the creators of this app did very well so far. It feels a lot like Procreate, and it can get a little tricky if you're trying to figure everything out and you're used to Procreate, which I am used to Procreate, so it's been a little tricky figuring this out. So hopefully this helped you guys a bit. Let me know if you have any more questions, like I said, and I will be sure to make another video. I hope you guys have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video.